we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money with this fund. One of them is BitWage, which is one of my favorite types of use cases because it's using the, the blockchain, using Stellar to be able to pay uh, payroll internationally. And I think that's one of the, and, and think about like, although BitWage pays the, the payroll internationally, there are other uh, companies that might be focused on gig workers and international payment of gig workers is something that I love to see used for, for blockchain use for. Uh, Welcome, Welcome to, to the Crypto, crypto Teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And guys, we have Miss Dixon from the Stellar Foundation. Speaking of Ukraine's digital economy, and that's CBDC. And we know Ukraine was working on this digital economy before the Russian-Ukraine situation became nationwide news, and then also before the C-word. We know the digital transformation is a new road order agenda. But again, guys, we see XLM. XRP all over in the emerging markets, which they supposed to be American companies. We know America is behind on purpose because they want China and the emerging markets to rise. They are the blueprint for America. Remember, America is the only free place left on the globe, and that is dwindling away very fast. But then also, guys, something very, very important. She spoke about the gig economy and how cryptocurrencies are definitely going to play a role. Because now, guys, when you go get a job, and I talked about this when I first started. I did videos all the time. Now, when you're applying for jobs, you're going to be applying globally. You're going to have to compete against the robots, automation, and then also somewhere over in India, somewhere over in the emerging markets. We know we already see that with the tech jobs. And with cryptocurrencies, you'll be getting paid on a daily basis. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Digital Hervinia in partnership with the Stellar Development Foundation. Joining us now is Danelle Dixon, CEO and Executive Director of the Stellar Development Foundation. Hello, Danelle. Thanks for joining us. So you've actually met with President Zelensky. He came to Silicon Valley in September. Are, are you still in touch? Has development completely stopped for the digital Hervinia? No, we, uh, first of all, I just want to say, well, thank you for having me here. But the what's happening in Ukraine is absolutely awful. We feel this deep connection because we have been working for so long with Zelensky's administration and with other folks and our colleagues in Ukraine. Uh, what we were doing was piloting a digital hryvnia. Zelensky made it clear that what he wanted to see in his country, and he wanted to do it over the over the over this year, but it was going to be really challenging to make that done, was to really move to a cashless society. So everything really digital and digital focused. And so we were uh, piloting a program with Tascom Bank focused on the digital hryphnia, and they're still working. It is a remarkable set of people, and we're working with them, and we're still talking to the administration about things that we can do to help uh, with uh, with the, the, the humanitarian aid needs that they have, but we are, uh, it, we're just amazed by all the folks in Ukraine and how uh, well they've worked through this terrible tragedy.
Yeah, Danella, uh, th- thanks for being on. I, one question I have is, uh, obviously, they, it, it seems like uh, Ukraine has accelerated its adoption of cryptocurrencies. Uh, and I say cryptocurrencies because they have official Bitcoin addresses and Ether addresses where people have been donating to. I, where is uh, XLM on that list and uh, how much has been collected? Well, what we're focused on with respect to uh, the administration that Zelensky has put together is really the notion of uh, a digital hryvnia. He really wanted to make sure that he maintained the uh, importance and the status of his local currency. And so that's why we're focused there with respect to that. But I will just say, I am so impressed by how well, especially during this time of the terrible tragedy that they're suffering, that they have continued to really work on this this particular bill that, that you just referenced is something that they have been talking about for the last year or so. And the fact that they got that through during this time is pretty remarkable. Uh, The fact that they're actually working towards accepting these donations and making sure that they can actually get this kind of aid into their country is just another sign about the innovation that they have within that administration and within the government there. Do you have an update on, I mean, it is remarkable that they're even working on this despite going through a war in Russia and having to deal with the humanitarian crisis on their hands and, and this violence and unnecessary aggression. But so I, I'm wondering, what is the latest to update on how that that program, the Digital Hervinia pilot, is going, and, and when do you see it potentially being launched? So I don't know the date of the launch, and this is something that we're going to continue to work with them on. But what's important is that there have been some disruptions with respect to folks who can, some of them can't no longer go into the office, and some of them are uh, no longer able to have the access to it. So it is not as consistent as it once was before, and we are working with them throughout this. But uh, So I don't have an update on timing of the pilot, but I just want to tell you that it is something that they're continuing to focus on. And as you can just see, just by the fact that they, they passed this digital assets bill, Um, this cryptocurrency bill in Ukraine, this is still a really important part of what they want to do. And we want to just do everything we can to support the focus of the arrhythmia itself and the strength of that particular uh, currency there, and also just do what we can to support any of the humanitarian efforts that they have. So it is uh, definitely one of those things that it's a work in progress, uh, but with respect to the the task of the work with Tascom Bank and with the Ministry of Digital Finance, it's a pretty remarkable step forward that they're, they're they're focused on all of these efforts despite what's happening in Ukraine. Yeah, Danelle, I you know, definitely they, they, it seems so that they are accelerating, in fact, uh, a lot of what's going on in crypto, uh, pr- primarily with purchases, because uh, some of the people that they have to buy arms through or, or uh, other, other military aid and, and humanitarian aid, they're accepting crypto such as Bitcoin and, and ETH. And I guess I'm wondering, it, it, uh, are you looking at potentially accelerating, uh, at least accelerating this process um, through the uh, through XLM on some level, uh, through Stellar, to create that infrastructure that will ultimately be used in the future for a digital hryvnia? Well, so from our standpoint, like we're ne- we were never focused on the use of the XLM. Again, focusing on the the uh, strength of the, di- the the digital hryvnia and the hryvnia currency itself. Uh, I will say though that we want to use the tool set that we have available to us. And just give one example: if you think about already the pilot that we have in the U.S. that's focused on getting uh, the on and off ramp with respect to MoneyGram, that is equally can be equally available in Ukraine and the surrounding areas for refugees. So we're definitely focused on using the tool sets that we have. And to that end, I do believe that they are escalating their usage of all of the different cri- cryptocurrencies. Um, but I do think that if you talk to Liz- Zelensky and the administration generally, they really want to ensure the strength of the hryvnia. And so they don't want to undermine that by having any other currency that comes in and likes it and takes over that that particular uh, the currency that they have there. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, 
not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.